using automation with Logic Pro X. This is a short tutorial on how to use automation, what it is, and some basic automation that you can get started with today for beginners. How I will structure this video is quickly show you what automation is, why you would want to use it, and then we'll get into some basic automation and walk through uh, the process. This is a song example that I do have complete and it is available for sale if you want to um, release it on Spotify or sing on it. You need beats to make music. This song is available for sale. Automation is strictly, it automates different things inside Logic. And what that means is um, you can automatically change for example, the volume throughout your track. Um, let's say we were listening to my track here and at some points of the song, I didn't want the kick drum to be so loud or some parts of the song, I wanted it to be louder. So without me having to like sit here every time the song is playing and change this volume filter, or this, sorry, this volume fader, without having to go like up at the certain points of the song or down, um, I can just, automate that and I can program it into Logic so it knows, okay, at the chorus, make the kick louder. Or um, at this part of the song, make the vocal reverb shine brighter and longer. Why you'd want to use automation is because it makes your song more exciting and it makes your song more dynamic. Without automation, your song is the same from start to finish. And so nothing changes. Of course, progressions change. The dynamic of your session player will change, hopefully. To view our automations, we press A on the keyboard. And so this expands for every single track. This little drop down um, kind of space here where it has these different drop downs and then it kind of grays out our tracks. And then you can see all these lines here. Like what the heck is all the lines, right? Let's just make this a bit smaller. So you can kind of see this a bit better. And that's what I mean by dynamics in the song. And so you can see here, it gets a little quieter, it gets a little louder, things are changing and it makes things exciting. So pressing A and and opens and closes your automations. Let's start adding these automations from scratch. We're going to look at adding a volume automation, a reverb automation, and um, channel EQ, a filter automation to change the EQ of the song as it goes over time. So let's first take a look at the most basic automation you can add, which is volume automation. I have our main keys here and we're going to add a rise volume automation to add some excitement here. So I'm gonna press A to open that up and we're just gonna zoom in on the track here. And to add an automation, you go underneath where it has the drop down. We have other areas where we can add automation. We have smart controls that are available with this keys instrument. And we have these plugins here. One, two, three, four are the four plugins that we have on the track. And we can go into these plugins and automate anything available within that plugin. For example, let's take the compressor. These are all elements of a compressor, right? Attack, auto gain, da 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 da, which are all available within this compressor. Okay, but not to worry, let's focus on volume. And so, how we want to add this volume automation is we can right away go to our little grayed out area here and click in, and this will have a generate this yellow line for us, which is at the negative 12.2 dB, which is what the current volume was at. And so we can be clicking in here again and adding different dots and start drawing our automation in. So let's say from this bar to bar two, we want it to go up, you know, maybe not that much, but maybe this much. And then over time, we want it to rise slowly up. And then we want it to end really loud. I mean, this is a kind of too loud to think of it, but probably more do an automation like just slowly a nice slow build so we would go up here and then maybe end it and you can also click these white dots and delete them so if we solo this track and hear what that listens to it's like this look at the fader here it's slowly going up 
that's one way to add automation. You can go and kind of paint it as you will with the mouse. Let's do another way, which is maybe more easier uh, depending on how you like to do things. So let's um, right click on this box and disable, sorry, delete visible automation. That's just gonna delete that automation for us. And we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to actually use this volume fader as the track is being played. And we do that by going here, and then we're going to switch from read to latch. And latch is basically means like, hey, when you press the play and the track is going and you're touching the volume fader, that's gonna program that in for you. So you'll see exactly when I press play and play with this volume fader, it's going to draw the automation in for me. So you can see I kind of had a little fun there and kind of went down and then back up and that's exactly what it did. As soon as you're done with um, latch, make sure, sure you go back to read because if you press play again and press something else, it's going to program that in for you. So. This is what we have, and we can, if we like it like this, we can just go with it. If we don't, we can also be clicking in, and I can drag across and re-edit that, you know, clean it, clean it up if I made a mistake, and you know, do, do my thing. If you're just beginning with automation, don't worry about write. That overwrites everything that you've done, so not a smart um, thing to, to do unless you are a real pro. Uh, which you will be soon, I hope. And then touch is the same thing as latch, and I'll show you what that is because it can be valuable with volume automation. So let's delete this automation again. We'll go touch, and touch is the same thing with latch, so I'm gonna just um, use the volume fader here, and then as soon as I'm done, it's gonna, it's gonna go right back to where the volume started. And that is helpful because let's say you want your piano keys, these main keys here, you want it to be at negative six. And then when the kind of first chorus drop happens or whatever, when the verse starts, you want it back at negative 6.6. .6. And that's exactly what touch is gonna do. So let's program this in. So you can see that's what Latch did. As soon as I stopped the automation, I'm just gonna go back to read here. I went right back down to negative six. Let's look at the next automation type, which is reverb automation. Why you might want to use reverb automation is some sections in the song, you want the reverb to have a longer decay or you know it, it sounds like it's really echoing. And, but you don't always want that to happen all the time throughout the song. So for example, let's use these vocal candies left and right. So we have a stereo kind of vocal candy here and it sounds normal like this. Let's say we want the first little one here to have normal reverb, but then we want the second one here to have a bigger reverb. So let's do this from scratch now and add a reverb so you can see what how to do it from scratch. So we have our vocal candy here. Let's add a new send. Um, let's find an empty send, uh, bus 14 to aux 12 and add a space designer reverb to get something really big here. Large uh, outdoor spaces, soccer field, a massive reverb. Okay, X that. Go to our drop down here and we'll under, um, our sends are under uh, main and you can see our five sends here. One, two, three, four, five. Those are the same, those are what these are. One, two, three, four, five down here. Those are five sends. So we have our last send, our fifth send, going to aux 12, which would be uh, main send five, aux 12. We have absolute. So now we have our automation loaded into the thing we want to automate, which is our huge soccer field space designer. So we can, um, we can always be going in and clicking in here and then drawing it in to what we want. And sometimes that is great if you know exactly the levels you want but that also can be difficult sometimes because it, you don't really know what you're doing. So let's do it exact, let's do it as we hear the song and we'll play with the knobs. So let's um, refresh this by doing delete visible automation. We can show it at the beginning because we're gonna go now 
um, we're gonna go latch, and then we're going to play with this um, bus send. As the track goes, we're gonna pop that up and then come down with it. So let's press play. Let's press, let's delete that and also do it again with uh, unsold so you can hear the rest of the tracks. All right, so that, that might be cool, right? The last type of automation I wanna show you that can be good for beginners would be like a filter channel EQ automation. And a, a very popular one that you hear a lot is when like the sound kind of rises up and sounds like it's underwater and then comes above the surface. Again, we will go and make sure we have a channel EQ on our track. So as we see here, we do have this, um, I, I like to use fab filter um, EQ and but let's use a stock plugin as an example because um, if you if you don't have fat filter EQs we'll make we'll, we'll be on the all the same level here so we'll add a logic EQ by just up clicking on that and we'll bring up this uh, EQ box and we will go now to our drop down automation under where it says volume and we will look for our plugin EQ and then we are going to look for um, we're going to do a low cut frequency and so that's going to be like the underwater sound. We want to make sure to, in order to do the low cut frequency um, on our channel EQ plugin window here, that the low cut is clicked on. And so now it's clicked on. You can see it's cutting a little bit. And again, I can go in right away and edit um, with my uh, mouse here. And I can start at 2000 hertz, or I can, you know, cut off everything and you can see the channel EQ is already kind of making that for me. You can also do it with latch and, uh, and make and start here and press play and um, slowly drag it over. So let's do with latch right now. Let's get a little more space. I had the loop on here. Let's go to bar five here and do a longer automation. So let me just um, delete that automation and go to my low cut frequency. Uh, here we go. Oh, uh, see, you see what the problem was there. I, I was on latch it still and I was like fooling around with things. So delete that automation, press enter to go get my playhead back to one. And now we will press play and start. There's your automation for you. There's your low cut frequency automation. And it's drawn it in and then go ahead and edit that if you'd like. Let me know in a comment if you are struggling with automation, I, I'll answer them all. And please feel free to subscribe if you'd like some more logic tutorial videos. Hope to see you in the next one.